Out of the hundreds and hundreds of Simpsons characters, the one who's had the most love interests has to be Selma Bouvier. But unlike the other characters that I've covered over on my other channel, like Brian and Quagmire from Family Guy, who are, let's face it, just plain horny, Selma is very different in the fact that she's actively looking for love. And unfortunately, she's failed a lot. She's been married to a man who tried to kill her, another who used her to boost his movie career, a mobster who tried to trick her into being his side piece, or Guma, amongst many, many more. She just can't seem to catch a break. You ain't that gorilla from the zoo. <laughs> So, I wanted to dive a bit deeper into Selma's tragic relationship history and see how her character has shifted with each one. So, let's get into it. At the beginning, Selma and Patty Bouvier were almost indistinguishable. They were both stereotypical sisters-in-law that hated Homer. It's an accident waiting to happen. Do you know the Heimlich maneuver? No. Good. <laughs> <laughs> But this was something that changed, in my opinion, for the better in season 2's Principal Charming. In the episode, Selma and Patty are invited to their co-worker's wedding, a wedding that may have been Selma's if her sister didn't get in the way. Hey! Beat it! Selma starts feeling like she's missing out on love, so she asks Marge to help her find a guy, and Marge gets Homer involved, and when he's called to Bart School to discuss one of his pranks, Homer then thinks Principal Skinner would be the perfect guy. So he invites Skinner over for dinner, but when he shows up, Homer accidentally introduces him to the wrong sister, but by then it's too darn late and Skinner falls for Patty instead. What? Patty. No! Oh, wrong one! And although they did try to correct this mistake, it's too late and Skinner is absolutely smitten. And even though this was a big blow to Selma, she was the one to convince Patty to give him a chance, thus showing that old romantic side to her which separated her from her sister, who was, by all accounts, totally unenthused. Would you be interested in joining me? I don't really think you'd be delighted. I'm going to cancel. No, you're not. This was emphasised by the fact that Selma still persevered in her search for love, but Springfield's pool of eligible bachelors is very, very shallow and perhaps as toxic as its leaks. And so a desperate Selma goes on a date with Barney. Also, while watching this back, I just love the little details here, like the shirt poking through his zipper and the fly buzzing around him. It really helps you feel awful for Selma, and the fact that she got all dressed up for the date too. It was a disaster waiting to happen, but she still tried, and yeah, as predicted, it wasn't love at first sight for Selma. Meanwhile, despite all odds, Patty starts to develop feelings for Skinner, but when she sees how unhappy Selma is, she decides to turn down Skinner's proposal for marriage. Honestly, at the time, I thought it was pretty sad that Patty chose not to pursue a relationship with Skinner. Now, I know it is a nice sentiment that she sacrificed her happiness for the sake of her sisters, but it was still a pretty deflating way to end the episode. But at the same time, structurally, it not only created that full circle moment of Selma now standing in Patty's way for love, but it also built the foundations for Skinner's character and his attraction for other brash women, like Miss Grabapple later on in season eight. It was also a great decision in retrospect because Patty is in fact a lesbian, and while this wasn't confirmed until way later in season 16, there were always little hints dotted in here and there in other episodes. Which kind of adds up, because when I come to think about it, in this episode it's never truly convincing that Patty is really interested in Skinner. Oh, Don't be stupid. Oh, no, sorry. And then after this episode, she wouldn't be interested in any guys after this. Well, except for MacGyver. But it's MacGyver. So getting back to Selma and Principal Charming was her first real spotlight episode. It laid out the core stepping stones of her place in the show that differed from Patty. We learn that she wants to find a partner, is frustrated with being single, and is actively looking for love. Unlike her sister, who is just fine being alone. Mm, it's Patty who chose a life of celibacy. But before we continue, I want to shout out my longtime supporter of the channel, NordVPN. If you don't know, NordVPN gives you safe and private access to the internet, and it does this by encrypting your connection and hide your IP so your online activity can't be spied on and you're not vulnerable to online threats and cyber criminals. Plus, it allows you to access streaming services and content that may be blocked in your area. Like the other day, I was really in the mood to watch Margot Robbie's Barbie, but it's only available in the Australian and Japanese Netflix. So on my phone, I connected to an Australian server 
server on the NordVPN app, reopened Netflix, and up came Barbie. Hi Barbie! And sure, there are free VPNs out there, but they often come with a ton of ads and they might track and sell your data. But NordVPN doesn't do any of that. And one of the best benefits is that one subscription can cover up to 10 devices, whether they're your own or your friends or your families. So to give it a try, just head to nordvpn.com forward slash Simpsons or simply click my link in the description below to get four bonus months totally free. And if you're still not sure, you can try it out and get a full refund within a month if you're not 100% happy. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring me and for being so awesome. And let's get back to Selma. So while things with Skinner and Barney didn't quite pan out for Selma, she wouldn't have to wait too long for the next man to come into her life. Everyone, I'd like you to meet. Ah, what the? In season 3's Black Widower, Selma thinks she's finally found love with Sideshow Bob, who seems completely reformed after getting out of prison. And sure, he's a felon, but unlike the barfly Barney, Sideshow Bob is a real upgrade, sweeping Selma off her feet with his sophistication and charm. Your latest letter set off a riot in the maximum security wing of my heart. Oh. Bob manages to convince everyone that he's changed. Everyone that is, except for Bart. Don't be a boy on Selma, that man is scum. Then call me Mrs. Scum. And because of what we've learned before, we can see how easy it was for Selma to overlook his red flags because of her craving for love and companionship. She was blinded by her desire to finally settle down and find someone. I just hope people don't think I'm marrying you for your money instead of your less tangible qualities. But this fairy tale is soon disrupted by the foreshadowing of her death. Till death do you part. I do. <gasps> From here, Bob's true intentions were exposed, his plan to kill Selma for her money. His whole scheme is based on her post-TV cigarette habit, which he uses to rig a deadly gas leak. But Bart saves the day by figuring out just in time and therefore saves Selma. Oh, you tried to kill me. I want a separation. And while Selma usually comes across as this tough, no-nonsense woman, deep down, she's actually very vulnerable and craves a real connection. So when someone like Sideshow Bob shows up, all cultured and sophisticated and sensitive, it's a breath of fresh air for her. I always loved how protective Bart was over his aunt in this episode. He genuinely cared for her and went to great lengths to try and save her. Now, I wish the show continued to do this, with Selma being more involved in her nephew and niece's lives, but I guess you could say that maybe this groundwork was more of a lead up into Selma's concentration on having her own family, rather than just having a relationship. Again, she does have loved ones around her like Patty and the Simpsons, but she still yearns for more. And this idea is displayed more in season four, Selma's Choice. Patty, I want a baby. When the family go to their aunt Gladys' funeral, she tells the twins in her videotape to settle down and start a family. Raise a family and do it now, 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 now. Side note, I love this transition here to the grandfather clock, symbolizing Selma running out of time to have a baby. It's fantastic. So Selma goes on a hunt for a man, first by signing up for a dating service. You're looking at a free lunch, boys. Come and get it. And when that fails, looks to buy a love potion. What are the magical ingredients? Mostly corn syrup, a little rubbing alcohol. You'll be lucky if it doesn't make your hair fall out, actually. Next up, she starts hitting on the bag boy when buying her groceries, but as it turns out, she hasn't got much riz. So, wearing a belt, are you? Yep. No suspenders for you. Much riz? Is that how you say it? Anyway. And so when he rejects her, she sinks even lower and dates Mole Man. They go out for dinner, but at the end of the night, just when he's about to kiss her, she imagines their future together and proceeds to kick him out of the car. And I don't blame her, those kids are freaky. Oh yeah, and we also find out that she ordered a date from a catalog. Just like your picture. So, left with no other option, Lisa suggests a sperm donor. So she heads to the local sperm bank, but the donations aren't exactly top tier quality. Uh, 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 uh. 
So while she debates having a baby via a sperm donor, Selma volunteers to take the kids to Duff Gardens when Homer gets sick. And while there, she finds out that looking after the children isn't as easy as it looks. Oh yeah, and I've just got back from Disneyland Paris recently, and now as a grown up, I can finally understand Selma here. Disney is exhausting, and to be honest, I don't know if I'm cut out for kids either. Get bent. But yeah, long story short, Bob gets stuck on a ride and Lisa becomes the Lizard Queen. I am the Lizard Queen! And by the end of the episode, Selma decides that she's not ready for the huge commitment or responsibility of raising a child. I just couldn't cut it today. I've always really enjoyed this tender moment between Selma and Homer here because she really lets down her walls and becomes vulnerable. And it is moments like these which make Selma a far more enjoyable and interesting character compared to Patty because she feels more real and sympathetic. But it's not a completely depressing ending of this episode though because Selma eventually invests all of her love to her new iguana Jub Jub. Me feel like a natural. Woman. Also, who else finds themselves randomly singing this song in Selma's gravity voice? No, just me. Alright then, let's move on. In my opinion, Selma's choice is one of the best ever character studies in the show. We're shown a lonely woman who has done a lot for love. She wants her own family and actively tries to go about it, first by traditional means, but then when they fail, she looks into alternatives like a donor. But despite all this, when it gets to the point where she looks after kids, Bart and Lisa, she struggles, ultimately giving her the self-reflection that she's not quite ready for it. She realizes that while she longs for a connection, rushing into having a child may not be the answer. At least, not for now anyway. All in all, Selma's choice really highlights her deep insecurities about loneliness, also her longing for a family, and also her realization that she might not be ready for such a big change and one that made me fall even more in love with her character. And it is moments like these that make you feel like you know these characters and really, really resonate with them. And this familiarity only grew in season seven's A Fish Called Selma. When washed up actor Troy McClure is pulled over for driving without his glasses, he's ordered to report to the DMV where he meets and charms Selma. And in return for passing his eye test, he offers to take her out on a date say, by buying you dinner? <laughs> and while out at dinner, Troy has absolutely no interest in Selma, seeing as his interests lay in the fishy variety. And he only becomes interested when the press start taking photos of them when they leave the restaurant. A little something for page one. <laughs> With Troy's career on life support, his agent tells him that if he wants to be taken seriously in Hollywood again, he needs to fix his image. And that's where Selma comes in. She's the perfect regular person to help him see more down to earth. And you know, not a fish loving weirdo. Maybe those rumors about his fish fetish weren't true after all. So the two go out for dinner again, and when she lights up a cigarette, she feels humiliated by the staff and patrons, so she runs away in embarrassment. This moment where she's crying on top of the car always felt so raw and so real to me, especially someone who is very self-conscious and embarrasses themselves regularly. And although this relationship is purely transactional for Troy, Selma is over the moon to be dating him and ignores all of the obvious red flags. I'll be sleeping downstairs in the visitor's center. Mm. Okay. They get married and Selma is incredibly happy, but when her sisters tell her the truth about Troy, she confronts him. Is this a sham marriage? Sure, baby, is that a problema? Selma eventually agrees to go along with the sham PR marriage because, well, she's not hurting anyone. And I think this is the key difference between this relationship and her one with Sideshow Bob, because she at least feels she's got some control over the relationship because she has the full picture. Sure, at first, Troy was definitely manipulating her, but she still made that choice to stay to satisfy her own longing for companionship. However, she willingly sacrifices this when Troy suggests adding a baby into the mix. And at first, yeah, she saw this as her last shot to having a family, but she soon realizes that it's just not fair to bring a baby into a loveless marriage. I'll always remember you, but not from your films. Mm -hmm. 
In the end, Selma walks away. She would rather be alone than stuck in a fake relationship and I love that. Even though she wanted a baby more than anything in the world, she refused to bring a child into a marriage that in the long term would negatively affect that child. It just showed how selfless Selma had become. And sure, she may be alone again, but at least she still has her dignity. And jub jub. Although this was a little underscored when only a few episodes after this in much ado about nothing, we learned that Selma got married for the third time. My name's already Selma Bouvier Twilliger Hutz McClure. Turns out that Selma got married and divorced to Lionel Hutz at some point off screen. And it sounds like this happened before Troy. And it's a shame because it would have been really interesting to see. And although Selma had no interest in marrying a poo here, the two would eventually hook up in season eight's A Millhouse Divided. Another man she marries off screen is Disco Stew, which we learn about in season 16. You see, last week, Disco Stu just got an annulment from John Paul II. And this isn't just a throwaway joke either, because the show would reference this relationship again, like in season 22. The only husband of Selma's I like was Disco Stu. He was so upbeat, till he found out she didn't care for Disco. And in season 27's Puffless, we find out that Disco Stu is still madly in love with Selma and has an entire room dedicated to a shrine for her. Which begs the question, why did he get an annulment from the Pope if he did love her so much? But anyway, cutting forward, in season 14, she's seen making out with Mo. You're not John Ritter, and you ain't that gorilla from the zoo. <laughs> it was at this point that Selma's love life was treated as a total joke, whereas earlier on, her stories were taken far more seriously with dedicated episodes and dealing with real, real issues. And sure, Moan is a lonely character, so yeah, pair him up with Selma, and I guess it probably felt like a natural match, but it felt shallow, there was no real thought behind it. This could also be said for her relationship with Artie Ziff in season 15, where they only really get together because he put Homer in jail. Even after this, she admits that he makes her sick. Well, he can't break my heart, because he kind of makes me sick. By the end of it, there were hints that they'd keep this relationship going after this, but they didn't. I think how this storyline of hers was turned into a shallow one was largely due to flanderization, where a character's one trait was ballooned to take up their entire personality, like religion with Ned Flanders, which is where the phrase comes from. And in Selma's case, it was her being a hopeless spinster for life. And so her romances started to become side gags and simply throwaway jokes. Principal Charming, Selma's Choice, and A Fish Called Selma are all A-tier episodes. They proved that Selma was a strong enough character to lead her own storylines. They also seem to have real consequences, and therefore, we could really see a linear development of her character through them. Saying this though, at least things slightly got back on track in season 16's Goo Goo Guy Pan. Now, I won't go too deep into this episode because I covered a lot of it through my past video, How the Simpsons Erased Ling Bouvier. But what I will say is that this should have been a huge turning point for Selma. She finally found what she had been searching for all along, which was a family of her own with her adopted daughter Ling. But the producers just seemed to drop the ball and went absolutely nowhere with it. In my opinion, they had no idea how to continue to develop it. They just didn't really know what to do with Ling, so she was reduced to being just a prop. And perhaps the only episode she had some kind of relevance in was in season 18's Romeo Old and Julie Eyre. When Selma and Grandpa babysit Maggie and Ling, the two really hit her off and kiss. A bear is eating my father! I'm Selma! Ah, a talking bear is eating my father! This seems so wrong on so many levels. Not only is he like 40 years older than her, but he's her sister's father-in-law. And if that wasn't bad enough, he was also in a relationship with her very own mother. Saying that though, they are kind of cute. In fact, he's the only person who has had genuine feelings for Selma. But Homer thinks it's just plain wrong, so he teams up with Patty to try and break them up. But their plan doesn't work, however, and Grandpa proposes. The two of them get married, but the cracks begin to show quickly, especially when Grandpa forgets who he is. We are on our honeymoon. I thought we were at the circus, Lisa. Oh boy. And later on, he starts having severe war flashbacks. Things go from bad to worse when Selma starts becoming overburdened at work and Grandpa comes rushing in after having almost burnt the house down. Ah! I'm wet 
getting scared and the house hates me. It's here where the two realize that their age gap is just too much and decide to break up amicably. Now don't be an idiot. A sweet young tomato like you will definitely find someone. While this episode definitely doesn't meet the heights of A Fish Called Selma, I think it's still a pretty solid episode, and although it didn't work out, I liked how it was a relationship built in respect and good intentions, unlike, well, her other relationships. It won't be until four seasons later where Selma starts looking for love once again, more specifically in the episode The Real Housewives of Fat Tony. When the mobster goes to the DMV, everyone is terrified of him, everyone except for Selma. So, you here for an eye test? Read this. So his goons capture her and take her to a warehouse, where he threatens to kill her, and he starts this by asking what part he should cut off first. You asked what I wanted cut off, and I want lipo. Lots of lipo. And for Tony being true to his words, Selma gets all the surgery she ever wanted. The two begin dating and they quickly fall in love. They get married and Selma looks so happy here, but Marge doesn't quite feel the same. After this, Selma starts acting like someone she isn't and starts dressing like she's from Jersey Shore. But when Marge and Homer find out that Fat Tony has a mistress, they tell Selma and she then confronts Tony. It turns out that Selma and Tony only had a Guma ceremony, therefore they weren't technically married. That's a Guma ring! This is a wife ring! On paper, I have to admit that Selma and Fat Tony do seem like a fun pair, because as you all know, I love a bit of Fat Tony, but this is yet again another example of Selma being tricked and manipulated despite her going in with good intentions. It seems that she just can't get a happy ending. And even the one time she did get a happy ending, like when she adopted Ling, it still didn't lead on to anything. Now, this episode aired in 2011, and that's 12 years ago, and Selma since then has been pushed further and further into the background. The only other hint we got into Selma's love life was this brief moment in season 22. What a cheap date this is. I'm not cheap, baby. I'm embarrassed to be seen with you. Big difference. And even looking into the future-based episodes, Selma is still shown to be sad and miserable. Like in season 23's Holidays of Future Past, we see that Patty and Selma have built their own robot partners, only for them to then run off with each other. Her dating history has become such a joke that by season 29, we learn that her exes have formed their own bowling team. Which is honestly so, so disappointing and so depressing. Out of every single character on the show, Selma always seemed to feel the most real. Someone who wants to break out of their depressing life and gain something meaningful. Even though Selma's always given Homer a hard time, deep down she's always wanted what he and Marge have, a loving relationship and kids. Maybe I've been mean to Homer because I was jealous of your happiness. Selma's often worried that time is running out for her in order to have the life she imagines, and that fear of being alone sometimes leads her into having bad choices, like getting involved in unhealthy relationships or rushing into big decisions. And in her better episodes, these decisions felt far more human because she makes them with the best intentions, where we can really understand the choices that she makes. And maybe that's the real tragedy. She can try as best she can, but she can never catch a break. But that's not why I really gel with her character, because there's so many stereotypes like this in the show. The crazy cat lady, comic book guy, Mo. but what separates Selma was the fact that she seemed to show consistent growth in her journey, which now unfortunately seems stunted. And she's pretty much back to being Patty's identical twin. She's regressed. But will this really be the end for her? I'm, I'm not quite sure, because it does seem like the show is wrapping up its loose ends, with Mo, comic book guy, and even Willy finding their own love, so why not Selma? Which leaves us the question, who should she end up with? Well, like I mentioned earlier, the list of potential suitors is very slim to none, so it has to be a new character. It has to be. Like, who's there left? But this time, I really suggest that the creators make it stick and actually develop it beyond a single episode. But what do you think, and who do you think could be a potential suitor for Selma? Let me know in the comments below.